Hello, my Betty Bats. I am here to read the upcoming patch preview for this month for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. So let's get through it. Hey everyone, Ray McCaffrey here with a quick update on what's been going on over here at Steel Wool, specifically details about our first major patch and what y'all can expect when it's released in early to mid-February. When we are evaluating what changes need to be made, we looked at two categories serious bugs that slip through the cracks for launch and quality of life improvements we see in the community rally behind we will be generating a comprehensive list of changes for the patch notes when it's ready but in the spirit of transparency we'd like to give everyone a heads up okay this is great they're listening to the community and shout out to dj sturf because he created an impressive long um, list of all the bugs that he encountered improvements um, where needed and I really hope that they read through that it'd be really great if they did because you know the game would be a lot better for it the first category is bug fixes serious performance and visual fixes for all platforms with more notable improvements appearing on the PlayStation 4. Not all of the issues have been addressed, like hitches that occur outside of moment-to-moment -moment gameplay between attractions, but we think you'll be happy with the steps we've been taking towards an overall better experience. We've made changes to jump scare functionality to prevent issues like getting jump scared during the game's credits and characters disappearing during a jump scare. We fixed issues with the world improperly loading and unloading. The most egregious example we fixed is the possibility of unloading the entire world when entering Freddy. Additionally, we fixed edge case bugs like missions not triggering if a specific series of events occur in a specific order, getting out of bounds under certain conditions and certain exploits. Get your fun in while you can. They definitely know about the robot head. <laughs> so... You know, I never really used that exploit. Um, I didn't want to cheat. So, like I mentioned before, I didn't really bother to try to achieve any of the endings. I played through the game and I did reach the end point where you're at the doors and you make your choice. But I did want to wait until the game was much more polished for me to continue on so then I can dive in and get the full experience again. Um, hey missions not triggering in a specific series of events occur in a specific order that was definitely a problem when i started in the game i didn't realize that one of the missions for the security badge which i believe was the fire escape little side mission i started that like towards the middle of the game and i would be able to get through the checkpoints until the very last part where gregory has to go through the, the doors and trigger a freddy response it didn't work um, so I noticed that when I check the objectives menu, it would be telling me to do the, um, set off the alarms and the countdowns where you have to survive in that little office space while Roxy and Mon Monty are like, you know, going through the whole area. So that was a big bug there. Hopefully that one was fixed. Um, world improperly unloading and loading. Yeah, everyone encountered that problem. And playing on the PlayStation 4 for me was definitely crazy because I experienced like the most bugs there. It was definitely a broken game. It, it, I guess it just wasn't optimized well for the PlayStation 4. I could be going to the atrium or just any other location and everything would be black. Or I would just have large patches of black on my screen and I wouldn't be able to see anything. It would just be real funky like that. Um jump scare during the game's credits and characters disappearing i don't think i experienced that really but i did see a lot of videos where gamers were experiencing that it was kind of weird and definitely frustrating um so i'm i'm glad to see that they are working on the playstation 4 version um yeah i really hope it's great Okay, the second category is quality of life improvements. We've added a single save station in the atrium for overtime, allowing you to save between end game events. Our goal was to make unlocking certain events more difficult. We succeeded, but at the expense of the fun. We help more folks pursue the game's endings with these improvements. We've extended the skip cinema system to include cinematic moments like the sun moon transformation sequence in the daycare. We've looked at ways to better telegraph goals and pass forward. For example, the colors of the cables in the daycare now use the same color system that we use in parts and service, so it's a little easier to get through that sequence. 
we've done a first pass of reducing the game's overall size on disc. We've also made some overall balance changes to things like the burnt trap boss battle and hiding spots. That's awesome. The single save station in the atrium. That's going to make so many people happy because I know a lot of people are turned off by how difficult it was to achieve any of the endings. Personally, I kind of liked how it was a challenge and just like the previous Five Nights at Freddy's games, Night 6 or Custom Night was not easy by any means. So it was just kind of, you know, following that same formula. But I can understand. I can definitely deal with a save station atrium. I can get to that, save any point I need to and be done. Good. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, skipping the cinema system. I know speedrunners will appreciate that. The sun-moon transformation scene kind of got annoying if you kept dying at the daycare sequence. Um, yeah, so I'm glad we're able to skip that if we just want to get through it quickly. Okay, colors of the cables in the daycare. I remember watching MatPat play through the daycare sequence and he suggested that. And I'm really glad to see that they're really listening to the community and taking their advice. Um, this is good improvement here reducing games overall size that's great too and the burn the burn trap boss battle and hiding spots i remember seeing markiplier play this and i don't think he got the tentacles that were supposed to come out through the vents so it was definitely buggy and he couldn't figure out how to get roxy to go away he just didn't know how to activate the chica voice box because the game i guess the game doesn't really tell you how to do that so it'll be a lot less confusing now that's great again these are high level descriptions the patch notes will be more granular we've got a final version of the patch and test now and so far it looks promising we're going to be taking our time to make sure it's solid which is why you won't see it released for a bit thanks for taking time to read this and we'll keep everyone up to date with any other plans changes you should know about ray mccaffrey executive producer this is getting me so hype right now. Like this is like renewing the initial excitement I felt about Five Nights at Freddy's security breach. I definitely can't wait for this patch to drop because I am definitely gonna play it. I guess my original goal of trying to play through all the original Five Nights at Freddy's series before this patch drops is probably impossible because I'm at Five Nights at Freddy's three now and I still have a ways to go. But yeah, I'll definitely be playing this as soon as the patch drops. And I'm excited to play this game in a more polished state. And I'm also excited for the DLC that will be coming soon. Because I feel like there's a lot that they can explore with this story. There's so much to this world. There's so much to the Pizza Plex and the characters that we were introduced. There's so much to Vanny that we still haven't really seen yet. Like, I felt like she was definitely not a threat in this game. You only see her a couple of times here and there. From the trailers, it's clear there was a lot of cut content, which... It's a shame I, you know, can understand that due to time constraints, the game was rushed. Um, they couldn't really implement everything they, you know, probably wanted to. But I really hope that in the future, they can make up with that, make up for that by utilizing Vanny more, making her feel more of a threat. She's supposed to be the villain of this game, uh, you know, glitch trap. So there needs to be that strong presence there for her make her more dark and creepy more menacing and it's a shame too that she doesn't have a weapon like she was supposed to have a knife um guess they wanted to go you know for a kid friendly route but i mean you didn't really have to show anything she could still chase you with the knife that still would have been kind of cool it would have been creepy because um although vanny is not scary it is creepy the way she moves and prances about and the way she runs really fast when she's chasing Gregory if she happens to catch you, if you get too close to her. It would have made it more fun that way and more scary in my opinion. Um, I definitely want to see more backstory on Glamrock Bonnie, if that's what he's referred to in this game, or simply Bonnie and Foxy. Because in Pirate's Cove, you do see a sign, I believe it says out of order or that he was decommissioned so something happened and seeing how it was like angrily scrawn on with an angry face makes me think it was really bad um i would love to see what happened there with foxy and bonnie seems like he was good friends with freddie because freddie seems more emotional about his disappearance than everyone else so i would love more backstory on that 
And to be honest with you, like I always had this in the back of my mind, based on the trailer's voice work, many, you know, mentioning Gregory's friends, we don't really get any sense that other kids were around. But when I observe certain locations of the pizza plex that have like you know junk thrown around like you can tell someone was living in that space and eating and somehow surviving off of it it could have been gregory and but i in my back of my mind i feel like okay this is not vanny's first time right obviously kids were disappearing there has to be more to this it could have been gregory's friends that were the ones that disappeared and why was he in the pizza plex? Was he investigating or was he trying to get to the bottom of this? Or did he witness the murders of his friends? I definitely would like to know more about that if, you know, more of the lore is revealed. So there is potential for this game and it can be great. So, you know, I, along with the rest of the community, I'm sure is very thankful that they're not giving up on this game and they're trying their best to make it the best it could be. So I'm looking forward to it 100%. So let me know what you think. Let me know what are your thoughts about these patch updates. Do you have any theories you want to share? Uh, what do you look forward to as far as DLC? And yeah, hopefully it's great. All right. Thank you for watching. Farewell, Betty Bats.